You're watching FJTN, the Federal Judicial Television Network. Even if I have determined that I'm going to change my life mm -hmm. and I'm going to do the right thing, I, I, I do not see my probation officer or parole officer as an asset. Mm -hmm. I see him as a liability. From the FJTN studio in Washington, D.C., this is Professional Responsibility, Post-Sentence Supervision. Here's your host, Mark Sherman. Welcome to the program. Today we pick up where we left off in our last program in April 2003, analyzing officers' post-sentence supervision responsibilities in the context of the Charter for Excellence. To help us understand these responsibilities better, we use a real-world example. In 1993, Tiffany Logan pleaded guilty to conspiracy to distribute cocaine base at the Southern District of Ohio. She was sentenced to 23 months in prison, followed by three years of supervised release. At the time of her sentencing, Ms. Logan was 25 years old and a single mother of two small children. Ms. Logan began her supervision the following year, 1994, under the guidance of U.S. Probation Officer Tina Ankrum. Special conditions included participation in testing and, if necessary, treatment for drug and alcohol abuse, as well as a mental health assessment to determine the necessity of counseling. Ultimately, Officer Ankrum determined that Ms. Logan was not in need of substance abuse counseling, but did require mental health treatment. She referred Ms. Logan to the district's treatment provider, where she came under the care of counselor Catherine Terser. Ms. Logan completed her treatment in May 1995. Things seemed to be going well. But Ms. Logan had a secret, something she had hidden from Officer Ankrum and from Ms. Terser. It would be six long months before that secret was revealed. In November 1995, Ms. Logan telephoned Officer Ankrum and finally told her that since February 1995, she had been involved in a relationship with an individual who was also under federal supervision, a clear violation. However, that was only part of the problem. Ms. Logan described a troubled relationship that had turned dangerously violent Officer Ankrum immediately instructed Ms. Logan to obtain medical treatment, to call the police if necessary, and to have no further contact with this individual. Unfortunately, Ms. Logan chose to continue the relationship, and very soon, another violent episode occurred. This time, Ms. Logan was stabbed several times and ended up in the hospital. Her life was in a tragic, downward spiral. On Officer Ankrum's recommendation, the court modified Ms. Logan's conditions to include a stay at a community corrections center, However, while at the center, Ms. Logan had a verbal altercation with a staff member, and that ultimately led Officer Ankrum to recommend revocation. Instead, the court continued Ms. Logan on supervision, including two months of home confinement with electronic monitoring. It was at this point that Ms. Logan began to turn her life around. She re-entered counseling with Ms. Terser. She ended her dysfunctional relationship. She went on to satisfy her electroni electronic monitoring requirement, and in November 1996, a year after revealing her violent relationship, Ms. Logan completed treatment. The next year, 1997, Ms. Logan finished her term of supervised release. And since that time, I'm pleased to report Tiffany Logan has remained on the right side of the law. Currently, she's employed full-time at the Ohio State Reformatory for Women, where she works as a registered candidate substance abuse counselor in the tapestry therapeutic community. She's also a personal trainer at various facilities for children and adults, and I am very pleased to welcome to the program Tiffany Logan and Tina Ankrum. Welcome. Thank you. Tiffany, was Tina an asset or a liability at the beginning of your supervision? Um, she was neither. What she represented to me was uh, the justice system that had recently let me down, so mm -hmm. she was definitely not, not an asset. Mm -hmm. And w when you, when you think about the experience that you had had in prison, and then coming off of that experience into the halfway house, and what had you heard about probation <laughs> officers, and what was your experience before you had even entered supervision that may have influenced your attitude toward Officer Ankrum at the beginning of the supervision experience? Um, well, while in prison, you know, you hear rumors or, or stories mm -hmm. of more lenient probation officers or 
you know, very by the book probation officers. And since it was a federal prison, there wasn't a lot of people from from Columbus. Um, so specific names weren't mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, however, Tina had done my PSI, mm -hmm. so I had some interaction with her okay. already. So, so, so you already I had knew a what to expect. Uh huh. And what was that? What was that impression? Um, very, very by the book. Very stringent. Very non-bending. Mm -hmm. Just very, very strict. So is it fair I to wasn't say? Looking forward I to was that. just going to say. Well, no. Is it no, fair to say you weren't looking forward to working much. with her uh, no, on supervision? Not at all. Um, Tina Ancrum, same question. Your impressions of, of Tiffany, particularly because you were able to do the PSI and then the supervision, which is unusual in a lot of districts and, in fact, is not even the way your district does it uh, these days. Mm -hmm. um, what were your impressions of Tiffany, both in the, during the investigation and then at the beginning of supervision, and what were some of your concerns? Um, actually, when I completed Tiffany's pre-sentence report, I thought she had a lot of strengths. She was a high school graduate. She was very involved in school, good mm -hmm. grades. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. And she had had an experience on pretrial supervision as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I gather that that was a fairly uneventful experience. It was. Mm -hmm. um, she also had the support of an extended family and um, minimal prior record. Mm -hmm. She had a no ops and an open container violation. So I felt that when Tiffany began her term of supervision, that it would be pretty uneventful, that she would do well in supervision. Okay. Um, were there any concerns that you had had about potential pitfalls or problems that might come up? Well, this was Tiffany's first term of supervision. Mm -hmm. So it was all new to her. Mm -hmm. um, I knew that it would take time for her to adjust mm -hmm. and you know, possibly to understand um, what was expected of her. Mm -hmm. However, Tiffany did um, a term of uh, a stay at the local halfway house, mm -hmm. and she did very well there. Mm -hmm. So I thought that things would go smoothly. Now, Tiffany um, said that she was not looking forward to working with you um, and to this, this term of supervision. Um, how would you characterize the beginning of the supervision relationship? And talk a little bit about that. It wasn't so easy at first. No. I mean, at the beginning, um, Tiffany was w not looking forward to it. It was obvious. She questioned a lot of the conditions and why I was requiring things. Mm -hmm. um, she did very well at the halfway house. Mm -hmm. She obtained a, a very um, well-paying job. Mm -hmm. She saved for an apartment. She had mm -hmm. an apartment. She reunited with her two young children. Um, she completed drug treatment while she was there mm -hmm. and did very well. So when she started supervision, um, I think she viewed me as, as why was I being so tough on her? Because she did well. Um, but with every case, I go over the conditions very thoroughly, my expectations mm -hmm. and what's, um, what she needs to do to succeed on supervision. Mm -hmm. But um, Tiffany questioned a lot of that. Um, she felt I was being tough on her, mm -hmm. and she actually ended up um, contacting my supervisor to ask for a new supervision officer because she felt that it was personal mm -hmm. and that I was asking more than I should. Is that a fair assessment? Very much so. Mm -hmm. I felt I was doing everything that she asked me to, um, satisfactory, and, and she just would not leave me alone. I just mm -hmm. didn't understand why she just focused on me so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I felt like there was someone else that was not doing what she wanted that she could have been focused on. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand it. And you, so you did contact her supervisor to try to get another officer? I did. Okay. Didn't work. Didn't work. Didn't I work. wanted to talk to you about that, Tina. Um, what was that like for you? Uh, it didn't surprise me because Tiffany was vocal during office visits, home visits. Um, she didn't like what I was asking. I mean, the reason I asked the question is that because in this Charter for Excellence, there's a, mm -hmm. a, a part in that charter that says, you know, treat everyone with dignity and respect, mm -hmm. including, you know, the individual under supervision. She's just disrespected you by going over your head to try to find another officer. So uh, what's it like to have to try to continue to treat that person with dignity and respect when she's just dissed you? I mean, it, it does didn't... It, does it 
play into sort of your attitude or should it play into your attitude and did it in this case? It, it didn't. It, it didn't surprise me. I understood where she was coming from. It was her first term of supervision. I could understand her feeling picked on because she was doing well. Mm -hmm. um, but it didn't impact our relationship. It's happened before. Mm -hmm. Others have asked for mm -hmm. new officers. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that was okay. I, I understood mm -hmm. how she was feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and my supervisor even told Tiffany, even if I transfer you to another officer, you're going to have to follow the same, the same right. conditions. Okay. So it, it didn't impact how I interacted with her or my expectations. All right, Let, let's talk about, now we know that some of the, that a couple of the special conditions dealt with assessments and ultimately, if necessary, treatment, either with substance abuse or mental health or both. How did the notion, you had completed a substance abuse program mm -hmm. while you were in the halfway house. Right. How did, and, and you had gotten through that program and you had transitioned on to supervision Fine. effectively. How did it feel when Tina said to you, you got to go through the substance abuse assessment, you got to go through this mental health assessment? How did that, did that sort of further impact your attitude toward the, the, the supervision? At that I point? think that was the turning point where I was like, you know, I think this is personal. I, I, don't, I don't understand. And at, at that point, I didn't understand how can you make an assessment? That's mm -hmm. not your field. Mm -hmm. You're a probation officer. That's mm -hmm. all you do. Mm -hmm. You want to put me back in prison. Mm -hmm. Um, and because I was doing well, I thought that, I thought at that time that she didn't like that. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, you know, I don't know if she had a, a ratio of, but I was doing well. Maybe she didn't want me to do well. So, mm -hmm. okay, so now she wants to try this. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was, just made it worse like, for you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, in terms of what your job is and what your expertise is, I mean, Tiffany had completed this substance abuse treatment program at the, at the halfway house. She had an assessment and potentially a counseling special condition uh, on her uh, as part of her conditions. Um, you had to resort to a, we, we talked in the charter about a multidimensional knowledge base mm -hmm. and that officers, what, one of the things that makes officers unique in terms of as a profession is this multidimensional knowledge base. You had to make some determinations about mm -hmm. whether Tiffany needed the, after the assessments, you know, would need particular types of treatment and whether it would be both types of treatment or one or the other. And this, the case that she had been uh, convicted on was a drug case. Mm -hmm. She had been through substance abuse treatment at the halfway house. Had, how did you make the determination ultimately that it wasn't a, really about a substance abuse thing, it was a mental health thing? Well, there were several areas of concern in Tiffany's case. Um, as you mentioned, it was a drug conviction. and. Um, Prior to Tiffany committing this federal offense, she didn't have a significant drug history. But she started down that path, was involved in using drugs, and for a period of her life, things were not going well. Mm -hmm. um, so she needed a substance abuse assessment for those reasons. Also, um, what I identified more so was mental health treatment. Um, and basically, that was more grief related. She had suffered several losses within a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Her fiance was murdered. She lost her grandmother. And all of this was, was had been brought to light as part of the pre-sentence investigation. I'm sorry, Tiffany, you were no, going to say. It was, the, but it was probably in the six month period. It was, uh, it was so this was very close together. Yes, and when I did her pre-sentence report, when I was asking her background questions, it, slowly all of this information came out. When I interviewed her mother and family members, I gathered more information about those issues. She also um, suffered a loss at her apartment where a fire engulfed her apartment, and she lost most of her material possessions. All right, so clearly, you know, there were things happening in her life that were not necessarily substance abuse di related directly, and there were sort of parallel things happening. Right. And, and having gone through this assessment process, you then, as the officer, were able to draw from your own experience and knowledge base to make certain determinations and point Tiffany in a, in a particular direction. Yes. Fair enough? Yes. I mean, there were significant losses in a short time. The other um, factor was that her career goal was to be a firefighter, and she was turned down for that because of a hearing loss. So with all of that information together, I thought that mental health counseling would be helpful 
to help her through all that grief that she suffered in a short amount of time and never had the time to address it. Okay. All right. We have a rocky start to the beginning of the supervision relationship. And we want to, uh, over the rest of the program, examine how that relationship developed. Mm -hmm. um, and I think to do that might be a good time now to, to bring on Catherine Terser. So let's take a break. What we're going to do now is take a short break so we can bring on Catherine Terser, who was uh, the treatment provider uh, in Tiffany's situation. Uh, in the meantime, fax us your comments, your questions, and we'll take them up later in the program. Uh, also, I wanted to uh, remind you that there's a participant guide for this program that contains vignettes of professionally responsible behavior by officers and which can be used for discussion in your district. Um, as you know, the Charter for Excellence was an outgrowth of the 2000 and 2002 Chiefs Conferences. Um, and at the 2002 conference, we had an opportunity to interview some folks from the Office of Probation and Pretrial Services at the AO, as well as some chiefs, to get their uh, reaction and impressions to what was just then an idea about the Charter um, and their hopes for it in their districts and in the system as a whole. So while we're away, take a look at that, and we'll be back in a moment. Charter for Excellence will go a long way towards articulating what our values are and who we want to be and uh, will we'll take us to the next level. To have a charter to be able to bring back to the district um, that officers can and other staff can see and work with whether they're in Arizona or Maine or Guam. It's something that we can use to build a more national vision of who we are and what we're about. I was really struck by the commitment and the passion that the fellow chiefs have for this commitment, this charter of excellence. And I like the principles that we put forward. I want to take those back to my district and I want to be able to share that vision and get that commitment and that passion with my staff. It just really inspired me to really go back to my staff and talk about some of the things that happened here and to actually challenge them uh, to, to have that integrity, uh, to be, you know, a big part of what's going on and have some invested interest. I really feel that our time is now. This is our opportunity. Welcome back. Um, Catherine, welcome to the program. Thank you. Um, you were the treatment provider for Tiffany. Talk about y your impression of her when you first met her um, and the kinds of issues she presented. And I'm particularly interested, you and I had had a prior conversation uh, before the program. Uh, I'm particularly interested in your insights about the effect of prison on an individual's behavior and what that might do, how it might play out in a supervision relationship and in a treatment situation that is part of a supervision, um, a supervision relationship. All right, one of the things that happened when, on, when Tiffany started, of course, it was an assessment process. So that usually takes about four times of meeting for about an hour. Uh, and I always, you know, really encourage clients, including Tiffany, to just use that time to really talk about what's going on. And, and to be really clear, there's a difference between therapy, which is really about, you know, the quality of your life and the quality of how, you know, how you're feeling and, you know, what, what are the skills that you need to, to, to create for yourself, um, how you interact with other people. Um, and so it's really about that, and it's not, you know, I um, don't work for federal probation. It's a very kind of separate thing, and but also being really clear um, that we do share, and and that um, that that you know um, that uh, Tina, of course, is, continues to be part of this, and to be really clear about that. For Tiffany, um, she came in at a time that she was uh, very sad. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way that I can think to describe it that she had um, a lot of really difficult things happen in her life, mm -hmm. uh, including the loss of a loved one recently, um, a loss of a fiance in a pretty violent way. And a lot of the things that Tina had talked about um, in the and, and, and um, you know, a loss of a career opportunity that was, you know, really exciting. And the, the kind of, you know, lo the loss of a home, if you can imagine, imagine just the kinds of things that would trigger that. And you mentioned also the experience of being uh, in prison, mm -hmm. away from small children, um, and just imagine being a single mother. So all of these things 
a um, lot. Stress. If you can imagine just the incredible amount of stress. Um, and I also saw this incredibly strong woman. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that you were able to keep a job and you were able to keep going and you were able to fulfill the conditions that, that Tina, you know, had, had established with you. You know what? Amazing. Uh, and so um, uh, very sad, lots of pain, a lot of I mean, grief, you know, grief work is kind of yeah. the way that I would think to describe okay. it. Um, and just kind of readjusting to the choices in the community, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff was going on. Stop you there, Tiffany. First, let me get your react. Is that an accurate assessment of sort of where you were in your life at that time? Oh, definitely. Yeah. At the break, you were telling me about what the loss of that job opportunity, the firefighter job opportunity, is that right? Yeah. Uh, meant to you, and, yeah. and I think that is worth just for a second elaborating on it. T tell me, you know, basically tell me again what you told me at the break. Well, that was just following uh, the death of my fiance, um, and I had already taken the test and was virtually hired. Mm -hmm. I was, I think, in top three percent of two hundred men and women. This was a really good job. It was. It was a career. Yeah. It was not going to be my career. Not just a job. That no. And and just because of something that I didn't have any control over. I had a hearing loss, mm -hmm. and I could not. They couldn't hire me. So that right behind everything else, like in a very short period of time, mm -hmm. it was just devastating. Mm -hmm. Tina, reaction as you were listening to this in terms of where Tiffany was and how the treatment process got started? Um, well, I had identified those issues, right. but when I told Tiffany that I wanted her to go through the assessment, she didn't want right. to be involved right. in that. Right. So although um, she knew that she suffered these losses, she was like, I can get through this. I don't need your help. I don't need treatment. Mm -hmm. So she was adamant not to be involved. Okay. Because for me, yeah. I, had, I, had, I, had, I had blocked them. I had, you know, it was a year later. Yeah. I was. Mm -hmm. You I don't want to rethink on. that. I don't want to open that stuff up. Right. I want to keep going forward. Right. That was my thought process. Right. What's your reaction t to that? Um, my reaction was um, it can be healthy at the beginning to compartmentalize and to just say, okay, I'm not right. going to deal with that. I need to keep going. I need to Because you got to function. Because you got to function. On the other hand, um, that stuff is always back there. Right. And then, it, I, you know, and in my assessment, um, you know, we talked, you know, uh, quite a bit about the things that had happened. And I really encouraged Tiffany to continue, that, that there were things that we needed to talk about, um, she, stuff that she needed. Stuff I never even cried about for that whole year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Man, I cried a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot. And so stuff that, you know, she needed to, needed to work through. Um, and I was going to say, Tina um, provided her with the, the choice. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, a choice to say, okay, so you've gone through the assessment process. Do you do you choose to keep doing this? Mm -hmm. That was big. That was a big thing. Because um, mm -hmm. at that time, Tina and I, you know, had we had started to build a rapport, okay. whether it was, you know, love-hate relationship, whatever you want to call it. However, she well, gave me... I think me you had come some way from where yeah. you had begun, uh, I think. Yeah. But she gave me an option. She okay. suggested that she thought it would be a good idea, mm -hmm. but she gave me an option. She said, I'll let you think about it. And just, uh, and w regardless whether or not, you know, she was really going to let me think about it mm -hmm. or she had already made a decision, yeah. just give me that sentence. I'll let you think about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have some control now. I haven't had control over my life for so long. That's a good feeling. Why'd you, why'd you do that? I mean, this was a special condition of her release, but you're presenting it as an option. How does that work? The special condition was that she underg undergoes substance abuse and mental health assessment. Okay and treatment if necessary, okay, required. Um, Catherine completed the assessment. All right, so the assessment was not an option. The assessment needed the, to be I told Tiffany, the assessment's not optional. Okay. You right. will go through the assessment, right. but we'll I just take to it from there. Make sure I was clear about that. Um, but Catherine recommended short-term counseling. Mm -hmm. Catherine and I discussed this, and then I sat down with Tiffany and discussed it. And what I had told Tiffany is it would be short-term counseling we would um, work around her schedule because, and we didn't talk about this earlier, mm -hmm. but she had a, a good paying job, but it was an hour out of town. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to work with her. We are going to do alternating weeks. We were doing it so it would be convenient, but also um, I didn't want Tiffany to view it as punitive. I wanted her to view the counseling as beneficial. So that is why I gave her an option, because I didn't want her to look at this as mandatory. Mm -hmm. I wanted her to benefit. Mm -hmm. So when she was in my office, I explained all this to her. I told her I would give her a week to think about it. Mm -hmm. It was optional for mm -hmm. her. I wanted her to grow from it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, not something you would necessarily do with another no, individual. No. It really depends on the the facts of the specific individual's situation. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, in this case, it was grief-related issues. I, I knew that I could give that option. Right. If it was somebody with a significant drug history, recent usage, or, you there know, was a risk. Yeah, on a medication, risk. whatever, yeah. then it would be mandatory. I would require that. In this case, I knew that I had some flexibility mm -hmm. with her at that time. Mm -hmm. um, but really, before Tiffany left my office, she was already beginning. I, I could tell she was really considering this. Mm -hmm. And I gave her a week. She probably called me back in two days and mm -hmm. said, I'll do this. And you feel like because it was presented in that way and because by this time you had gotten to know Officer Ankrum a little bit better, you know, and it wasn't as rocky as it had been at the beginning, that that helped you. That gave you said, I think before, it gave you some power to okay. make that determination and probably, that probably may have actually persuaded you to go forward with probably it. Probably 90 percent of just giving the option was the reason why I did it. Uh -huh. Besides the, like I said, the assessment was four weeks long for an hour, so I did have a chance to interact with Catherine, which was right. very comforting, and you know, I did I did like that hour right. with her. So that, that had a lot to do with it, but 90% was the fact that it was an option. Mm -hmm. You know, I had say so. Well, and it, it, like you said, even before I, I left the office, you know, she knew that, okay, maybe, I'll think about it. So which, which was more, if she just said, you know, you need to do, for, I'd have been like, you know, I'll go. I'm not saying a word. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't presented that way, so. Right. I, I, what's, what's among the many things that are interesting about this conversation, one of the things that I think is particularly interesting uh, in light of the charter is the relationship, not only that is developing, sort of the individual relationships that have been developing between the two of you and now the two of you, but the working and professional relationship that you've established and you had established uh, between you know Catherine and Catherine with Tina, um, and I, I want to talk about that a little more because I think that um, I mean it is something in the charter where there's a there, there's something in the charter that says um, there's a goal of ensuring compliance through community-based partnerships. I mean, this seemed like the formation of a partnership, and not only a partnership, but sort of. A, a tri almost a triangular partnership, but even though different things had to happen in individual relationships, not an easy triangle to navigate, I think. So, Catherine, could you talk a little bit to that notion of working with Tina as a partner and what's get, what gets shared and what doesn't get shared and how that works with, with Tiffany so that she's in the loop and that kind of thing? Well, it's interesting because, of course, when we ta talked about, you know, she came for an assessment, her initial re reaction was, I'm here and I'm not going to say anything. Resistance. And so, yeah. um, and that can often happen with, m with, um, with mandatory um, counseling, you know, where, you know, the court basically says, you're going to go uh, and you're going to work on your personal issues. Um, most of us would have a reaction of, okay, I'm here, fix me. Right. You know, um, right. you're not going to necessarily go through a process where you own it. And so um, one of the things that, you know, uh, that I always do is really clarify that this is really your time. But I'm also really clear that um, Tina and I have a working relationship, which means that um, uh, although the details of the story are not necessarily relevant, um, the kinds of things that you're working on are. Mm -hmm. And so that we need to really share that and be really clear that, 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 that the client, in this case Tiffany, knew ahead of time, you know, that when she talked, um, that I also had a relationship with Tina. And at that point, I, you know, we talked a couple times a week, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. um, not just about Tiffany, of course, but about a bunch of different multiple clients. Multiple cases happening. Right, exactly. Uh -huh. I, I think that um, that notion, you mentioned this notion of owning the process, for the client to own the process. Um, but that requires some knowledge on your part about the process and about how treatment works. And this uh, I'm sort of, it rings a bell with me because you and I had talked before about it's really important for officers to understand how the therapy process works and how the treatment process works in order for there to be an effective partnership. Sure. Any, it was, was beneficial. It was, it was beneficial for, for me them to be able because to. Because I wouldn't tell Tina a thing. Right. Even though we had come a little bit farther than we, you know, had in the beginning, you felt I didn't more trust, comfortable. I didn't trust the system, mm -hmm. per se. That's what she represented to me. Mm -hmm. I began to trust this person here, mm -hmm. although I knew, and she was very clear from the onset, that 
information would be told to Tina and you know have I manipulated in my own mind I don't care I'm not telling her mm -hmm. you can tell her whatever you want to but I'm not telling her a thing mm -hmm. so I knew it was going to Tina mm -hmm. but it wasn't going to come from me mm -hmm. and but and I trusted this person and it's interesting um, because Catherine then you could make that determination about sort of how what gets shared you know I, not to say that you're, you are going to be deceptive or something but right. you know there's a you've got a trust relationship that's essential to the uh, successful to the success of the supervision potentially um, and to helping the client turn her life around and to make good choices but still you need to work in partnership with the officer and you as the officer need to have that understanding of the therapy process and that trust relationship and in fact that that trust may not yet exist and it may never exist between the two of you because of what you represent as good a person as you are um, and I think that that's, again, what makes this partnership so important, but also so difficult, I think, to, to achieve in, in terms of a successful partnership and, um, and, and working successfully with an individual. Uh, any reactions to the importance of, the, of knowing that, that process or, you know, what kinds of information gets shared or, you know, partnering with a treatment provider? Um, Catherine and her agency, we work very well together, probation and her agency. Um, Catherine's familiar with the criminal justice system. She knew what was important to share with us and what I really didn't need to know. Mm -hmm. um, but we talked regularly. W there, was, there was always honesty between us. There was, um, we wanted to be very clear about the expectations in Tiffany's case because on the other hand, we don't want Tiffany manipulating one of us. Um, mm -hmm. And we would share information free-flowing back and forth mm -hmm. so that it, if she didn't appear for a session, I would know. Or if I found out something about Tiffany, I would call Catherine and mm -hmm. vice versa. And, and you knew that this kind of communication was occurring. Well, I, I did. However, the first time I was late, I, uh -huh. Tina knew. Uh -huh. I didn't know she was going to know. Uh -huh. I mean, I didn't know she was going to uh -huh. find out. Uh -huh. I didn't mean to. I was just coming. I was late from work. But, you know, she's like, well, I heard you were late. I'm like, dang. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 that made an impression on you. I'm like, okay, they talk more than about the Guess case. Guess I better not be late the next time. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's interesting. Uh, helpful to know. Um, uh, now, all right, let's move on. Uh, you completed the treatment with Catherine for the first time in May 1995. Uh, but it wasn't until November of 1995 uh, that you told Tina about the relationship that you were having um, with this other person who was under federal supervision and that that relationship had become violent. Um, and that, that that relationship had actually been going on since February 1995. So why did you call Tina? I mean, this was somebody that at the, you had said that you didn't trust. But when you, at this point, in this crisis, you called Tina. Why'd you do that? Well, to understand that point, I think I think maybe um, you have to understand a little bit about why mm -hmm. the relationship even began. Okay. Um, Tina, while I was in, incarcerated, Tina, I had spoke with her a couple of times, and I, I I told her that I was trying to, or I would like to come out and do some kind of, you know, public speaking to children, you know, about what not to do to come to prison or whatnot. So she she provided me with a lot of information. Uh, that she knew, um, but it didn't. It didn't work out. They they just weren't ready to to do that with a felon. Mm -hmm. So um, I figured, you know, since I was doing so well up to this point, and and had been for almost a year. I think it was about a year. Um, I could help another person mm -hmm. who had just came home, who did not know how to get a job, who you know, whatever. So that's how that relationship began. Period. Just okay. as a friendship, and then. It, it took a turn, and um, the reason why I called Tina at that at that point was because I, I pretty much figured that I couldn't handle it anymore, mm -hmm. even though I thought I could, and I and I thought I was doing a good thing. Mm -hmm. However, it, it 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 didn't turn out that way. Mm -hmm. But why not? I mean, you had a, you had a, a family I had that a very was very supportive, supportive family, which I think. But you called your probation officer, the person that you said that at the very beginning of the relationship, yes. you, of the supervision because relationship. Because I didn't knew trust. at that point that I needed. Um, not just understanding. I needed. I needed. I needed the tank. I needed Tina. I needed her to, you That's know, remove me from Tina. this, yeah. from this 
remove me. My mom couldn't remove me. Mm -hmm. Apparently my actions uh, or even, you know, me trying to get out of this relationship mm -hmm. was not working. Mm -hmm. I needed someone with some authority mm -hmm. that would, you know, have my best interest in mind, even though, you know, my feelings hadn't changed a whole bunch. I knew that she would do that. And that's mm -hmm. what she did. Did she react in, when you told her, did she react in a way that you thought was helpful? She reacted just like Tina always reacts. Mm -hmm. Cool, calm. That's what you were looking for. Yeah, I needed that. I needed that. That showed me that, okay, it's going to be handled. I'm not real happy with you. Mm -hmm. um, and that, for me, felt bad to disappoint her because we had been doing so well. We mm -hmm. had been doing so well. Mm -hmm. It was a collaborative thing. Um, so I, I, so I, was, I felt kind of bad. But, I mean, mm -hmm. either I call her, she'll find out anyway. I'd rather hear from me. I don't want, I don't want to hear from anybody else. That notion of disappointing her, feeling like you didn't want to let her down, I think is a really important observation. Um, because think about where you started and then what had developed over a period of several months you know you had gone through a lot already and you were now not wanting to let her down or disappoint her um, how do you what, how do you react to that what was your reaction when you found out about this and were you surprised um, the day that she contacted me actually I was out doing home visits I was out my secretary called me I immediately called Tiffany and we were on the phone probably 45 minutes to an hour and she laid everything out. Um, I, was, I was very surprised because, you know, like I mentioned, all the strengths in Tiffany's background mm -hmm. and... Did you feel let down? Yeah. Did I? Um, I? I was disappointed with her choices. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. know that she wanted to help others. Mm -hmm. I had given her several options, nothing worked out, but I certainly didn't want her to make the decisions that she made. I mean, she, she violated several conditions. Um, so I was, I was disappointed about that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, on the other hand, I, I appreciated that she came to me. She contacted me. Mm -hmm. So that was a step in the right direction. Catherine, what was your reaction when you found out about this? Or were you surprised? She didn't know. She at didn't that know at that point, point okay. because she was no longer in California. Ah, right. That's right. She had completed in '95, um, in, in May of '95. Uh, do you? What did you do? Um, well, on the phone when I talked to Tiffany, this violent episode ended just shortly right. <laughs> before. Um, wow. So, I mean, she immediately so called So this was something me. that had immediately occurred right before you called. Yeah, I escaped Tina. and I went to the first All right, booth. so this was, so something had to be done immediately. Yeah. And, and you took, you know, you gave that, you, tell us what you did. Um, well, I mean, hearing everything that happened, I told her to get medical treatment mm -hmm. and then to contact the police and file charges mm -hmm. and then to come in the following morning to meet with me. Okay, and then f sort of longer term, what did you do? Um, well, I clamped down <laughs> on her in several ways. Mm -hmm. um, she made some poor decisions. Mm -hmm. I increased contact with her. I don't know if I increased her office visits, mm -hmm. but I know that I was yeah, at, I, was, uh, I increased I her was office visits. One. I then knew how lenient she was. Well, and, and, and the fact, <laughs> that's actually a good point, you know. I then found out how she could be even worse than I thought she was already. I thought she was really on me. She was really on me. Eight in the morning at my house. You know, I mean, just ridiculous things. I'm like, look. But not so ridiculous for no. in your book. No. Yeah. I increased her office visits. I was at her house much more regularly. Mm -hmm. um, I don't always go through the entire house every time. I started more frequently saying, let's walk mm -hmm. through the house. Mm -hmm. um, I stopped by her job mm -hmm. pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. And I also required her to get back into counseling mm -hmm. to um, discuss some of the decisions that she made in um, this relationship mm -hmm. and disengaging from it. So the relationship continued. Um, and how did that play into the continuing of the supervision? And you had stepped up a lot of what you were doing. What happened? Um, the relationship continued, I found out in several different ways. Um, ev I was always confronting Tiffany. And you were just, you were doing a lot of field work at the time. I, I was, mm -hmm. I definitely was. Um, but um, she got reinvolved in counseling and when she continued this relationship mm -hmm. and wasn't following instructions, 
I ended up, um, well, I talked to Tiffany and I explained that I was requesting a modification to go to the halfway house. Did that make you mad? I didn't know at the time. I didn't, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know where my head was then. Yeah. I was just like, whatever. Why, why, why were you unable to disengage from your re relationship, do you think? I, I think that if I it, think that's where Catherine shed some light on when mm -hmm. I finally, um, when I finally got back in, in tune with her. I don't think it was the, the, the person per se, it uh -huh. was my goal and uh -huh. what I was trying to do, uh -huh. you know, kind of, I don't know. It, w it was the goal that I had was, I was so, I was so focused on. It wasn't the person, it could have been any person attached to what I was trying to do. Uh -huh. I needed to do that. I needed to show someone how, how I did it. Catherine, I don't know. Would, any re reactions to that or, what do you think? I think that for many people, um, we help other people before we take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's a good defocus for me. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. And um, and sadly, this became really violent, mm -hmm. um, and and became a situation um, that led to her not being with her children, and 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 was incredibly incredibly sad. But it allowed, you know, Tiffany to really rethink. Okay, well, what do what do I need to do to to take care of myself? you know, short term, you know, grief work is Im really important, but that's the tip of the iceberg. Uh, and so um, we spent, you know, a year looking, yeah, <laughs> yeah looking at, um, you know, uh, you know, um, sometimes, you know, people, abandonment issues, um, mm -hmm. but very seriously looking at, you know, abandonment issues and grief issues and, uh, you know, parenting and really getting deep and getting into deeply stuff. into you know, weekly getting in, in deeply into um, just all the things um, that nobody wants to look at. Mm -hmm. And that it's not really safe to look at when you're in prison. I mean, that's the other part of that, yeah. is that you can't right. look at that in an effective way. You need to, but you can't look at that in an effective so way when you're incarcerated. It up, right. So, you know, um, this, uh, the consequences of all of this led to, you know, her taking a lot of time to really you know, take good care of herself. Okay. So you go back to the halfway house. Uh, one thing leads to another, and ultimately, Tina, you end up recommending uh, that the release, supervised release, be revoked. And there's a revocation hearing, and after the hearing, the judge recommends um, that Tiffany be continued on supervision, but with electronic monitoring, home confinement with electronic monitoring. Tiffany, first, I'm wondering, look, you know, your probation officer is basically recommending that you be get, that you be sent back to prison. What was your reaction to that? Do you remember? Oh yeah. Were you happy about um, it? No, I felt like with, with this certain situation, which was an altercation, um, a verbal altercation with me and a staff member, um, mm -hmm. I felt like um, I felt like Tina betrayed me because hmm. she, you know, I'm looking across the courtroom and she's over there. Why are you over there? Mm -hmm. You don't believe me. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought we so had So again, you're back thing. to this adversarial thing right. after having developed a trust relationship. Exactly. With her. At, well, at the same, at the beginning, you had not had a trust relationship. So you right. had come a long way, and then you was like back at almost square oh, one. Quickly. And, um, but the outcome was in my favor, so that made me feel good. And I kind of was like, you know, now, you know, now, you stay over there with him. You, mm -hmm. you didn't believe me. Uh -huh. So it was really, it was, it was very emotional, really, for me uh -huh. to see her over, you know, over there, I guess, so uh -huh, to speak. Uh -huh. Back over there, yeah. basically. Tina, um, reactions to that and sort of how it affected your approach to supervision, how you felt about, you know, your recommendation not being, you know, taken up by the court, uh, and your reaction to Tiffany's reaction and how she felt about you again. Well, um, she was unsuccessfully terminated from the Alvis house. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Which I was had the halfway house that she was at. Yes, right. sorry. It's okay. Um, <clears throat> but my initial recommendation was a modification for the halfway house. Mm -hmm. And I explained to Tiffany that she needed to do well, comply with the conditions, and get through this program. Mm -hmm. And if she did, we continue on with supervision. If she did not, she would be returned to court for a revocation hearing. So I always lay out my expectations very clearly so that everyone understands them. Um, within less than a week, she was unsuccessfully terminated. Mm -hmm. And like I told her, if she didn't complete, she would go back to court. 
So in the violation report, everything's laid out. You know, I explained to Tiffany, um, and it took a while until the revocation hearing took place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I still was at her house. She was still coming into the office. Mm -hmm. um, and I was continuing to work with her like I do everyone else. Mm -hmm. You know, I had actually referred her to a couple different things that I knew she would be interested in, mm -hmm. um, continued to work with her. Did On you feel, I mean, was it her, her sort of this new sense of, this anger and her sense of resistance palpable, or and, I mean, or was this sort of business as usual? Um, you know, I, I felt like, I mean, yeah, there's a revocation hearing hanging out there, but I felt that we got along. Mm -hmm. I mean, in speaking with her and speaking with her attorney, um, I referred her like we had an employment open house. I referred mm -hmm. her to that. I referred her to a couple of um, juvenile agencies that she could possibly do public speaking. Mm -hmm. She would always get back with me and thank me, or mm -hmm. this was helpful, or, you know, I interviewed at the place she referred me to. It was an hour long. Things went well. Mm -hmm. I mean, she seemed appreciative. Maybe, <laughs> maybe she wasn't, but, um, mm -hmm. but you know, we went back to court, and you know, I laid everything out in the report. We went back to court. Um, the court found that she was in violation of all the conditions mm -hmm. that were outlined mm -hmm. with the exception of the um, threat mm -hmm. at the halfway house. The judge wasn't convinced mm -hmm. that she exhibited menacing behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that was fine with me. Mm -hmm. I mean, when she was terminated, I had interviewed several of the staff mem members at the halfway house. I, I wasn't um, quite so sure right. where uh, what actually transpired. I was completely um, okay with the judge's order. Okay, but let's say, just for the sake of argument, that it had not been that way, and that there had there had even thinking about another case, you know, that there was a situation in which there was a clear problem, but that for whatever reason the court did not think that revocation was appropriate, even though you did. Does that affect what you do? Uh, no, it doesn't. Does that I'm affect your relationship with the with the offender? Does that affect, you know, your attitude toward the mm -hmm. supervision? I mean, you're an experienced officer. You've been doing this, mm -hmm. you know, for years. You know, does it, should it get you angry? Does it make you angry? Uh, no. I mean, I, I've been doing the job for a long, long time. time. So it, it didn't make me angry. Um, it would change supervision, you know, her conditions were modified to include electronic monitoring. I made those appropriate changes. Um, after court, I asked Tiffany to come up. I sat down and I said, you know what, you, you received a gift from the court today. Um, the judge outlined the expectations. You need to take advantage of this. You need to do everything right because the judge made it very clear if you don't follow through, you'll be back before the court. Okay. So I emphasized to her that she needed to do what was expected. Okay. Catherine, uh, moving ahead now, I mean, now we, we know that Tiffany has re-entered supervision by this time, uh, re-entered treatment by this time. Compare the first, the second time through treatment with the first time. And we've talked a bit about it already because you referred to the depth that you were able to go into the second time as opposed to the first time. but. Maybe just sort of in terms of attitudinal differences or other observations. Well, and I'll say this tentatively, Tiffany, because of course you're going to know better than yeah, I yeah, do. Yeah, jump um, in at any time. I, I, here. I think that um, you know, there's a difference between the first date and the the twelfth. Uh, and if you think of it like that, like you know, we were we were getting to know one another during the assessment process, and and you know, um, permission to talk and, 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 you know, creating a safe space and all the things that you need to do to start that process. Mm -hmm. And that was a really, I would say it was a really good beginning. I think that, sh mm -hmm. you know, you uh, addressed some, some pretty difficult stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. really difficult stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but that the second time was different. It was like, oh man, Captain, I messed that. That's what I did now. Mm -hmm. You know, Tina's really pissed, you know, it was kind of like that, like, you know, right. I'm back. Right, right. But you also, I think, is it true to say that you saw it as an opportunity? Oh, yeah. To, you know, all right, now yeah. I really have to get into this. Yeah, they're not playing. You know, 
And then you could, it was all about, I mean, I think. I mean, but uh, if, you can, if you can honestly believe that, I really was not trying to mess up the first time. I that really was not my intention. I mean, as much stuff mm -hmm. as Tina put me through, and, and I felt like I, you know, I, I did it, you know, mm -hmm. I was really, that was not my intent to begin with. Mm -hmm. I really thought I was doing a good thing, but it just, at my thought process at the time was not, was not focused. Mm -hmm. Did you observe differences this sort of second time through as opposed to the first time through and as just part of the supervision? And in counseling, mm -hmm. yeah. um, Tiffany, I don't think, held back. She she opened up. She shared honestly. You dug in the dirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Made a difference. You think, Tina? I do think it made a difference. Um, you've come a long way. At the beginning of the program, you mentioned that you were uh, working at the Ohio State uh, Women's Reformatory uh, in the therapeutic community. But I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about some of the other things that, that, okay. you've, that you're proud of that you accomplished. So, Okay, and let me, I just wanted to yeah, add, in sure. a therapeutic Absolutely. community, um, like Tina and Catherine were saying, um, in, a, in a prison setting, you don't have that opportunity to share. And all you do is, you know, you have to put up this front and, and there's nowhere to share feelings. But in a therapeutic community in Tapestry, that is exactly what's given, an opportunity for the women to do that, which is where I work, which is would have been so helpful for me. It would have been such, I would not have had mm -hmm. all that, I wouldn't have had all that mm -hmm. had I went through that program. Mm -hmm. um, can, can I ask you, now that you work in that kind of a program, has it helped you sort of find out things, of, just discover things about yourself? Oh, definitely, or? definitely. And even how Tina must have been feeling, because now uh -huh. I have clients. And you know, and, and, and when they don't you're do part well, of the system, when know? they don't do well, right? How am I viewed when they walk in? But I know that because I, mm -hmm. I've already walked that, mm -hmm. I've already walked that path. So um, mm -hmm. it's very good for me to work there, mm -hmm. and I think I think I mm -hmm. think the women appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Talk about um, some of the other stuff that you've well, done since the end of the supervision. The supervision ended in '97. That was a good year for me. Very good year. Tina let me go, and uh, and at that same year, I, I also um, gained the uh, national boxing. Uh, championship belt, mm -hmm. uh, heavyweight, and then the next year, the following year, I was the IFBA heavyweight world champion, first female mm -hmm. boxer. Mm -hmm. So that was really good. Mm -hmm. That was a big highlight for me and my children as well. Mm -hmm. I have to say, Chelsea and Stevie, or they'll mm -hmm. kill me. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, it, 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 I'm just sort of struck by you know the way that the supervision, what you were, what you had experienced before you even encountered the supervision, what you encountered during the supervision, and how you dealt with it, and how these two people worked together and with you together in different ways, in different roles, to be able to help you get to where you're going. But it also reminds me, and this reminds me of something, Tina, that you had said one time in a conversation. It's sort of like, you know, it's important for officers to keep in mind that if the individual doesn't want to change, you can do everything right. And I wanted to sort of briefly touch on this because the two of you had a great partnership, you know, yet still things began to spin out of control, you know, back when, you know, the, before the conditions got modified and there was the relationship and that kind of thing. You know, so you could even have the best working relationship professionally and things can still get by you you know and ultimately it's up to the individual to make the changes necessary and to decide you know that they want a different was there a point uh, we, we run, run out of time but was there a point where you sort of had an aha moment or where you were like I need to change the way things are going yeah it was you know Do you remember the, that yeah I was stabbed several times during that relationship. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, that was, it's not working. I need to focus on Tiffany and get back to Tiffany because the foundation, I, I believe, the, I strongly believe the foundation is laid in, in the home as a child. You know, I knew what the right thing was to do. Mm -hmm. I just fell off path with all the grief things that were going on in my life. Mm -hmm. And I just had to remember what I knew was right to begin with mm -hmm. and just get back on that, which was the support system that Tina had talked about earlier with my family. My mom is very strong support still to this day. I talked to her yesterday, you know, and um, I just had to get back on track. Mm -hmm. and, and with Tina's, you know, sternness and Catherine's 
um, kind of like the bad guy, good guy type thing, mm -hmm. if I can say that. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much how, how I felt. Mm -hmm. and, and with both of those, um, it was okay for me to feel over here. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't okay for me to mess up over here because mm -hmm. I knew better. Mm -hmm. I knew what I was supposed to do anyway. Mm -hmm. So, and I didn't have to call Tina. She would have never found out that because mm -hmm. it wasn't visible at that time, mm -hmm. you know, but, but I felt at that time I felt like I could. And that was a big thing for me because I didn't trust people a lot. Mm -hmm. So, Any final thoughts? about Tiffany's situation or uh, the work in general? Um, you know, we had a lot of rough spots, but it took a lot of work and effort on Tiffany's part, and she finally, I mean, it really got to the point where she was backed against the wall, couldn't get her out of the relationship, put her in a structured and safe environment. But I really think she s started to change and take advantage of everything at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, and she's come a long way, a mm -hmm. long way. Mm -hmm. Catherine, any final thoughts? Well, I have to say, I just think it's so exciting seeing you know, how beautiful you are. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's beautiful at the beginning, but just how far you've gone and mm -hmm. uh, the growth work. Whew, I mean, it's amazing. I don't see it like that sometimes, but they remind me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's cool. I'm glad you had an opportunity to come and, and be oh, here and, thank and you work with us on this. Um, thank you all very much, Tina Ankrum, Tiffany Logan, Catherine Turser. Thanks for joining us today. Um, you've really helped us understand officers' responsibilities under the charter, I think, a lot better and given it some meaning. Um, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.